music icons, industry moguls, even fellow rock legends, they all had opinions about Kurt Cobain's tragic death. While some offered heartfelt tributes, others sparked outrage with their insensitive remarks. Were they out of touch or was there something deeper behind their words? Get ready to dive into the controversy. Before we begin, it's crucial to mention the following disclaimer. While there are reports and videos showing celebrities making comments that could be perceived as insensitive, it's important to consider the following context. Some comments might be made in the heat of the moment. Our goal is to examine these comments and their historical context, not to condemn individuals. Now let's get started. First, we've got Dave Mustaine, who was a lead guitarist of Metallica before being fired and co-founding Megadeth. Dave had a strong dislike for MTV in the way it glorified Kurt. When MTV named Kurt Man of the Year, Dave was vocal about his disapproval. During an Italian show coinciding with the one-year anniversary of Kurt's death, the interviewer asked Dave Mustaine for his thoughts on him. This was Mustaine's response. Today is like the anniversary of the death of Kurt Cobain. Do uh, you feel like saying something or? He was a good aim. Dice sì, era sicuramente una good aim, brava yeah. persona, però forse. I have nothing to say about him. Mustaine's comment have sparked controversy and backlash from fans in the public who found his humor inappropriate and disrespectful towards Cobain's tragic passing. While some may view it as dark humor or part of Mustaine's persona, others have condemned his lack of sensitivity and empathy regarding such a serious topic. Overall, the public reaction to Dave Mustaine's joke about Kurt Cobain's death has been largely negative, highlighting the divisive nature of his comments on this sensitive issue. Megadeth wasn't the only metal band with insensitive remarks about Kurt's death. Metallica, particularly James Hetfield, also made questionable comments. Pretty good jokes lately. Any requests? What color was Kurt Cobain's eyes? Blue! One blue this way, one blue that way. Fucking terrible. Lars Ulrich took the opportunity to crack a joke about the entire band. Check this one out. One has four arms and four legs and works at McDonald's. The remaining members of Nirvana. <laughs> However, Lars's comment backfired spectacularly. Within a year, Grohl had launched a legendary career with the Foo Fighters, proving his talent and the enduring power of Nirvana's legacy. We've created a detailed video exploring what Metallica and Nirvana truly thought of each other, so be sure to check it out. Gene Simmons from KISS is also notorious for frequently speaking his mind. In a 2013 interview, long after Cobain's passing, he stated, Kurt Cobain? No, that's one or two records. That's not enough. Amy Winehouse? That's one or two records. That's not enough. What, just because you died that makes you an icon? To him, the true icons are Elvis Presley, The Beatles, Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, and The Who. Alongside these, during the 70s, he includes Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, and his band Kiss. He also believes that no one in the last three decades can be considered a music icon, stating that from 1984 until today, there hasn't been a superstar bigger than their music, not just somebody who's recorded one or two records. So what do you think? Do you agree with Gene Simmons's definition of an icon? Or can a few powerful albums solidify someone's legendary status? Let us know in the comments below. However, at the time, Gene Simmons asked Nirvana to be part of a Kiss tribute album. But instead of accepting the offer, Nirvana Prank called Gene Simmons while they were recording their album, In Utero. The band coerced their producer, Steve Albini, to pretend to be Kurt Cobain during the call, as they were not interested in participating in the tribute album. We got this call from Gene Simmons. He's really hot to have you guys on this album. Do you want to call him back? And Kurt is like, I don't want to talk to fucking Gene Simmons. And I said, I'll do it. <laughs> you know? I called him, called him back and I pretended to be Kurt. And I, I parried the whole thing away by saying, 
that I wasn't making all the decisions because I had a reliability problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're, and are you talking directly to Gene? Yeah, as and, Kurt. And Gene thinks he's talking to Kurt. Yeah, and Kurt is sitting right next to me, listening to me do an impression of him. You do a really good Kurt, by the way, Steve. Really <laughs> and Nirvana had recorded a kiss song Oh once. God, that was a disaster. What did you record? We were drunk. Do you love me? Uh-huh. We were drunk. Okay. Peter Steele expressed admiration for Kurt Cobain, referring to him as one of his heroes and acknowledging the courage he believed it took to face life's challenges metaphorically. Steele mentioned that he was waiting for the punchline in life and highlighted that he wouldn't consider ending his life for a couple of reasons, one being his anticipation of life's surprises. Additionally, Steele shared his struggles with depression, his use of Prozac for over 10 years, and how his music served as a significant source of support during difficult times. Fred Durst, the frontman of Limp Bizkit, expressed a deep connection and admiration for Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. He even has a tattoo of Cobain on his chest. Durst revealed that he really connects with Kurt Cobain, citing that he has been impacted by Cobain's poetry, philosophies, and music. He shared that he has his own struggles and torture, drawing parallels between his own depression and that of the late Nirvana frontman. Durst's song, My Own Cobain, from the band's album Gold Cobra, directly addresses his struggles with depression and serves as an expression of his turmoil. However, Fred received backlash for his mocking gesture during the Liverpool concert in 2014, where he pointed a gun to his head and shot while covering Nirvana's heart-shaped box. Whether Durst's actions were intended as provocative theatrics or a genuine act of insensitivity remains a point of debate. In an interview on Conan O'Brien's Late Night on April 11, 1994, Sex Pistols singer John Lydon, also known as Johnny Rotten, shared his opinion on Kurt Cobain. Known for his candidness, Johnny always expressed his thoughts without fear of public opinion. Uh, Kurt Cobain just passed away. Mm. A, a lot of people say about fans you immediately. Can clap louder. <laughs> <laughs> they can. We saw that. That a lot I of the, the... That audience manipulation. Yes. <laughs> Do you see any similarity between the Sex Pistols and Nirvana? Uh, well, if there was, he wouldn't have topped himself, would he? Because he would have learned that life's precious and not a thing to be destroyed. And, uh, Don't be fobbed off with that dirty, druggy rock and roll culture. It's not good for you. It's important to note that while he might have a slightly crude style of communication, he went through pretty much the same with his best friend Sid. Additionally, at the time, there were some copycat suicides, which were part of the dominant attitudes and trends of the time. I. I miss my friends. Even Kurt Cobain's own record label head, David Geffen, faced controversy due to decisions made around Nirvana's music. Following Cobain's death, Geffen faced criticism in the industry for allowing Nirvana to release an album called Incesticide, which had disappointing sales figures. The recordings that Sub Pop sold to DGC prompted the label to compile these tracks into an album, aiming to satisfy fans' curiosity about Nirvana's earlier work in musical evolution. Therefore, the release of Incesticide was more of a label-driven decision to capitalize on Nirvana's existing catalog and offer fans a deeper look into the band's musical journey, rather than solely reflecting Cobain's artistic intentions. Ted Nugent is an American artist and outspoken conservative political activist. Known for his hard rock anthems like Cat Scratch Fever and his wild stage persona, he's a highly controversial figure in both music and politics. He is also known for his controversial and insensitive remarks about Kurt Cobain's death. In a 1994 ABC interview, 
Ted Nugent expressed that he was glad Kurt Cobain was dead. Kurt Cobain was the perfect example of the toxic underbelly of disgusting denial that permeates our society today. He was a weenie. I'm glad he's dead. Our last celebrity on the list is Eminem. As part of his slim, shady persona, Eminem frequently dissed celebrities, and Kurt Cobain was not spared in his song, Come On Everybody. Eminem literally opens the song with the line, my favorite color was red, like the bloodshed from Kurt Cobain's head when he shot himself dead. Eminem also made fun of Cobain's death in his miniseries, The Slim Shady Show, when the characters brought back Kurt Cobain's ghost for an episode and most of his face was missing. So there you have it, the insensitive remarks stars made about Kurt Cobain. Which one do you think was the most outrageous? And do you believe they would face consequences if made in today's cancel culture? Share your thoughts in the comments below.